it looks like there's a wide gulf in the people of the Lord. Half of them back there. <laughs> turn, to, turn to page 792. Seven ninety two. You can stand. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, I shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair.
If you want, the choir's going to sing for us. How are we doing that song? Old time Christian. Comparative. Rather be an old time Christian. Old time Christian.
You know, I'd like for him to draw me closer to him. I live and live, give me a heart to live a cleaner and better life. Amen. Amen. Give a little hand. Anybody else tonight, Steve? <clears throat> My mom's been gone 23 years, but it doesn't seem like 23 years. Uh, you know, I think I think about mom every day, and I still have times when I hear a song, and I think I need to call mom, mm -hmm. tell about that yeah. song. And, but that's not what. Uh, my, I, I, I talk a lot about. Y'all know I have grandkids, right? <laughs> yeah. I heard like jokes. <laughs> Lisa has turned out to be the most godly mother I've seen in so long. She leads those kids, and and they pray. They pray together. She tells us Bible stories. She reads scripture to them. And Jake is a godly man. Uh, it's her husband. And I thank God that my grandkids are going to be raised that way. Amen. <clears throat> and one more thing is God's kind of impressed on me that, that uh, revival could happen anytime. Amen. You know, we, we sometimes we plan a big, we're going to have a week long revival. We're going to invite this evangelist in. We're going to have gospel singers and we're going to have a special service on Sunday, and that doesn't mean anything to God. He can start tonight. Amen. Amen. The revival can start tonight with just this few here. He can start Wednesday night. Yes. But his plans are not our plans. And no matter how hard we work out, we want to do this special song. We want to have this special speaker, and we're going to do this. We're going to have a prayer meeting. It's, it's all in his time. Yes. And I'm looking for a revival, and I'm looking for it to break out. Anytime. Praise God. It, it might happen. Two or three of us get fired up tomorrow mm -hmm. morning just praying on our own. It, yes. it, it happens. Man. So I just want to pray that we have a good time. Give the Lord a hand. <laughs> Anybody else tonight? Something good you want to share? Serena? Um, I had a blessing at the National Day of Prayer. Um, not just getting to pray with other believers, but just seeing that there is young people out there that you know a lot of people can say what they want about our generation but God has not given up and he's certainly not given up on these kids and so it was a real blessing for me to know that there's other believers out there that's continuing the faith continuing the work regardless of what media or people may say so amen. I want to praise God for that amen give the Lord a hand anybody else tonight Something good the Lord did for you, you want to share? Okay. Well, we just thank the Lord for all that He's done for us. And again, Amen. happy Mother's Day for the hundredth time. Can't say it enough. Mothers are special, so we always want to make sure we continue to say that. And again, it's not just as David said, one day a year. You know, the Bible says, honor your mother and your father that your days may be long on the earth. That's the first commandment with promise. So we certainly want to... And whether your mothers or dads or those are gone or not, you still want to honor and respect them even in that situation too. So, But anyway, those are just some of the things that we want to continue to hold up in our day and age. And uh, I know, uh, again, this old world's trying to steal everything away from us, and that's perfectly fine because there's something I've got the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away, that's for Amen. sure. So we Amen. praise the Lord for that. But uh, again, we thank you all that are here tonight. And uh, again, a couple things I want to say before we have prayer tonight. Uh, baby bottles that we got back here in the back, I need them back in by June the 6th, you told me, right, Pat? It'll be the first Sunday of June. And uh, actually it looks like some more of them went out today. There's not a whole lot left. So we appreciate that, just to make sure we try to get them back. And again, that is for choice resources. And again, if you all wasn't here, when Laura, uh, what's her last name? I went blank. Crusoe. Crusoe. When she spoke for us and talking about how that they were trying to help the ones that are about to have children or going to have children and giving them a choice of not to have to abort the baby, but at the same time give them a choice of how to get some resources to help them to make it through because a lot of these ladies, you know, we can preach to them and tell them, you know, everything bad about this, that, and the other, but they need to have some kind of resource to go to. They need to have something, you know, just because you tell somebody about how to fish, you need to sometimes take them out there and show them how. And again, I'm relating that to, of course, trying to train up some mothers and things. And I appreciate the work that they do and some of the others that we've had here lately also and talked to. 
But anyway, if, you, if you're uh, dealing with that, try to get them in here. You got the month, like I say, I just keep throwing my change in it. Sometimes I try to go ahead and keep change. Lord, normally I hate change because I hate rattling in my pocket with it. I just soon have it the other way, but that's a good way to have it for the end of the day and throw it in there. But uh, anyway, and then also, uh, our, uh, this month, the 22nd, we'll have Dallas Rogers singing for us on our Sunday night service. And uh, I also want to mention that day on Sunday morning after our church service, at 1 p.m., T.C. Baker has invited us to come down there to where they have their church service at. It's a community service. And uh, again, that'll be taking place at 1 p.m. You don't have to stay that long, so don't worry about that. We'll be back in time for even you that are in the choir. You should be able to be back for that. And, uh, well, I don't even know we'll have that with Dallas Rogers. I'll leave that up to Steve. We'll see. But uh, anyway, for that service that night. But uh, there'll be plenty of events. And, again, this will be for some health issues, trying to have a doctor speak, well, some different ones, and then also others in trying to help our youth pursue higher education and encourage them and to build a better future. So we certainly want to, again, consider if you can be a part of that. That will be at 1 p.m. on the 22nd of this month. And then, like I say, Dallas Rogers will be here this that evening. Uh, going back to prayer requests, uh, Karen Grayson, again, I, her and Chris was going somewhere for the next couple days to see about her diabetes and also uh, start back with her treatment. She still got, what was it, three more, wasn't it, Pat, or four, three? So we certainly want to pray for her. Still praying for Steve and Bonita Shaw's uh, uh, youngsters. Well, I shouldn't say youngsters, but their family, uh, Billy and Denise Jeffries. Uh, both has dealt with that old diabetes. One, the, the boy, the young man, I keep saying boys, but anyway, had to have his toe removed. Uh, he is doing well with that. Unfortunately, it's had, had to be done, and then she's doing better where I, hopefully that will not have to take place. Judy Hall will be going up to Indianapolis from the 15th to the 18th of this month, which is not far away, and she'll be staying in a hospital up there for those few days, and they'll be running tests and seeing if they can do this uh, surgery that's uh, it's an experimental surgery. So, again, they've got to make sure that she's the right candidate and stuff. So we certainly want to keep her, her in prayer, still praying for Pete Scruggs, and uh, from what I understand, she was doing better. Uh, she's back home, I believe, from what I understood. Still praying for David's wife, Melody, Melody Wire, and uh, also praying for Cindy Boggs, uh, Darlene Roberts. It was good to see her in church service this morning with some of her family. And then for all the other families we've mentioned, and still Donna Sumners and Tanya Prince. Praying for those little babies. I know Pat, she was asking for her great-great-grandson, uh, little Nathaniel with his legs, but he's having some other problems, wasn't it, Pat? Yeah, they're just checking out the shelf that he has that he's dead. Because if he gets a lazy eye, that's a sign that something's wrong with his son. But thank God it wasn't this time. It was just allergies, they said. Okay. And we also want to remember uh, Donna Zayner. She's having uh, some kind of a sh think shoulder or something surgery this Thursday so I've been asked to keep her in prayer there's a family that had a loved one uh, pass away and I'm not going to mention the names I probably some of you already know probably but we certainly want to keep that family in prayer and then uh, for our grandfather Bob Shepherd of course uh, Bob and Patty go forth it was good to hear him sing today and again that's that's a very Good thing for him because just keeping the air and oxygen is just a blessing. Uh, still praying for our country, praying for our military, praying for Ukraine. Uh, still glad to see Mary Roberts, her and Mike back here tonight, and still yes. praying for her continual health and well being. And then Dallas Endeavor, we're still praying for her family over there in Panama. Prayer request from you all starting up here. As always, for you and for your wife for the church, the ministry as a whole. As Steve's been talking about, and I think I've mentioned too, that I think we're right on the edge of something wonderful really happening. And we'd like to continue that. Amen. And again, as has been mentioned a million times, for the mothers. Yes, amen. Other prayer requests? Uh, prayer requests out here, anybody? Yeah. Tom? Denise is 
neighbor is the one that fell off the ladder, and he's in the U of L. Oh, wow. He is doing better, but he busted himself up pretty good. Mm. Who was it? Do you know the name? Mark Watts, I think. I think his name is Watts. Watts? Watts. 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 I got to write things down or I don't remember. <laughs> I will name some, <laughs> not really, but anybody else prayer requests tonight, Mary? Other prayer requests? Anybody else? Yes, Serena. Um, I want to pray for the youth to come to the youth revival in June. And also for the uh, speakers that are going to be coming from Spirit of Love Center Church. I was able to talk with them Saturday. And they've been praying for this thing for three years. So just keep them in prayer and pray to, for the kids too. Amen. Amen. Need a revival in all of our hearts, don't we? Young and old alike for sure. But yes, our young people need it just as much as anybody else for sure. Anybody else tonight? Uplifted hands? Okay. As you stand, if you like tonight, if you'd like to be anointed, I can do that for you. If you don't, that's perfectly fine. You can stay where you're at. That's up to you. But uh, again, we've got a, a host of people to be praying for. And uh, again, it was nice to see Shelby here this morning with her little baby. I uh, certainly pray for these little ones to continue to, again, grow up in the ways of the Lord. I appreciate what Steve was talking about with some of his grandkids there. We like to see all of our children and grandchildren come that way up. And then for Elise Whitlock, uh, she's expecting, I think she said, the 26th of this month. So we certainly want to keep her in prayer. It seemed like there were some others possibly, but anyway, God knows. Uh, let's agree in prayer here tonight. And if nobody was wanting to be anointed... Father God, we just thank you tonight, Lord, for who you are. We thank you, Lord, for being God. We thank you, Lord, for being our Savior. We ask you tonight, Lord, that you touch and move upon our lives, Lord. Uh, God, there's so many needs in people's lives today, Lord. We just pray for your touch upon each and every one of them. We do pray for those that are dealing with cancer right now, as uh, Mary was talking about her daughter, daughter-in-law, ex-daughter-in-law, of course, but at the same time, uh, still needing a touch from you. And God, we just pray that you move upon her life. Uh, we still pray for, again, those that are healing from procedures, those that are taking treatments. We pray for Karen Grace and pray for her and Chris both and that family. Uh, still for the Jeffries family, for Judy Hall, uh, Peach Scroggs, and uh, again for Melody Wire. And again for Darlene Roberts and Lord, for the family that just had a loved one to pass, Lord, in some devastating ways, we lift them up to you in prayer. For Bob and Patty, go forth. We pray for them. We pray, Lord, today as we've acknowledged Mother's Day for all the mothers. Uh, Lord, as David was mentioning this morning, some that have lost their children before themselves, Lord, and uh, God, what a, a hurtful thing to deal with. And others that uh, no longer have their mothers and their family with them anymore. God, we pray for them as well. And for those that do, Lord, we pray that, uh, again, Lord, the old song, may the circle be unbroken, Lord. May that be a part of each and every one of their lives as well as ours. God, again, we just lift up our country for our leaders, for those in authority to be under your authority of ship. We pray for this nation to turn back to you, Lord. And God, as we had National Day of Prayer this week, Lord, again, may we remember 2 Chronicles 7, 14, where it says that we'll... Again, humble ourselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways. Lord, you promised that you'd hear from heaven and you'd heal our land and you'd save our nation. And I know that was talking about Israel at the time, but I believe that promise is for any land that will do just that. And God, may America begin that process once again. We thank you that this nation is still here today. And we thank you, God, that I believe you've still got plans for it. Lord, we just ask you, God, for anything and everything that we do as a body of Christ, that we do it to your glory and honor. We do pray for a spirit of revival to break forth. We pray for our young people for great things to break loose in their life with revival. And, and God, as Serena was talking about the things going on in June, I, I just pray, God, that you'll sit the atmosphere and prepare the hearts and to even draw the people in, Lord. We pray that for every, every opportunity in ministry, Lord. I, I know that... Uh, 
Again, we're not after just trying to make a show of numbers, but as Brother Cash said many times, Lord, that numbers represent souls, so we don't want to forget that every soul is worth more than all this world and everything in it. And we pray for that. We pray for all the ministries here at North Charlestown, whether they're in the building or out. Uh, Lord, for the ones that go to nursing homes, for the ones that work with young people, uh, for the ones that are singing on a square in different places. God, we just pray, Lord, that your anointing and your power. We pray for the, the North Clark Ministerials Association as we gather with other ministers that you'll bless and anoint that, that we can see a, a community of believers come together and, and unite in the kingdom of God, that we can truly see revival break forth, not just in a church building, but throughout our land, Lord. And we pray that for both. And again tonight, Lord, for everything that's been mentioned by your people here tonight, and Lord, for the hands that went up, for the ones that will be watching and listening at another time, we agree in prayer for those situations, and again, for all those that are healing from things that they've had done, for those that have had back problems, neck problems, and, and Lord, all these other issues, Lord, we just pray for each and every one. Father, have your way in this service tonight, and continue to bless and anoint it in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 You may be seated if you like. Tom, would you mind doing an offer for us? Can you handle it? <laughs> you can. Lord, we just thank you for the offering being received here tonight. For those that give and can, for those that can't, we pray for their needs as well. And again, may everything we do in word or deed be done to your glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
else something you want to share before we get into God's Word tonight and a few other things? And again, Happy Mother's Day to all the ladies. Lisa, I read this in class this morning, but I'm going to read it again tonight. I think you're the only one in here to... I thought this was kind of <laughs> neat, but I think before I read that, i got something else I wanted to read. Some of the President's quotes that they made. George Washington once said, My mother was the most beautiful woman I ever saw. All I am, I owe to my mother. I attribute success in life to the moral, intellectual, and physical education I received from my mother. Abraham Lincoln made this statement. He said, I remember my mother's prayers, and they have always followed me, and they have always clung to me all of my life. Andrew Jackson said, there never was a woman like her. She was gentle as a dove and brave as a lioness. The memory of my mother and her teachings were, after all, the only capital I had to start life with. And on that capital I have made my ways. And these are some of our presidents that made those statements about their mothers. And again, we appreciate our moms. This is something Dottie Roberts gave me a list. And I know I read something the other Wednesday night about... Uh, again, the Lord's Prayer, and I'm not going through that again tonight. But it says the pastor's church that he was over was called the Almighty God's Tabernacle. On a Saturday night several weeks ago, the pastor was working late and decided to call his wife before he left for home. It was about 10 p.m., but his wife didn't answer the phone. The pastor let it ring many times. He thought it was odd that she didn't answer, but decided to wrap up a few more things and again try in a few more minutes. When he tried again, she answered right away. He asked her why she didn't answer before. She said that it never rung at their house. They brushed it off as a fluke and went on their merry way. The following Monday, the pastor received a call at the church office, which was the phone that he used that Saturday night. The man that spoke wanted to know why he called last Saturday night. The pastor couldn't figure out what, what the guy was talking about. Then the guy said, it rang and rang, but I didn't answer. The pastor remembered all of a sudden the mishap and apologized for disturbing him, explaining that he intended to call his wife. The man said, that's definitely okay. Let me tell you my story. You see, I was planning to commit suicide on Saturday night, but before I did, I prayed, God, if you're there and you don't want me to do this, give me a sign now. At that point, my phone started to ring. I looked at the caller ID, and I never did answer it, and it said, Almighty God. I was afraid to answer it. <laughs> Remember, the church was entitled Almighty God's Tabernacle. So again, God used that as a sign for somebody. Do you believe God can do that in people's lives today? Yeah, Praise amen. God. Matter of fact, we'll be talking about that some, somewhat, not about a telephone call. But if you would turn your Bible over to 2 Kings chapter 4, and I know that that's familiar Mother's Day messages, but at the same time, I think it's meat for our soul tonight. That's what we're looking for. But 2 Kings chapter 4, and Lord, we just ask you to, to take this time in your word and use it for your kingdom, I pray. And may the spirit of grace and mercy be upon it for your glory. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditors has come to, to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. He may have feared the Lord, but he still didn't have very good crediting situations. But anyway, the sons are about to be taken and slavery is what he's talking about when it says to be brought and to be in bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, The handmaid hath not anything in the house save or except a pot of oil. Wow. That's all I've got. I've just got this little bit of nothing. Remember what we were talking about here a while back, how you know God can take people that think they're nothing and use them for something? How Amen. people can take things that we don't feel like is worth anything and He can use it? You know, this little pot of oil, and I know we can talk about the anointing of the Holy Spirit, but this is just a little pot of oil. It's not anything. It's not, a, it's not even worth talking about. If you hadn't asked me, I wouldn't have even thought of it. But that's all I've got. 
You know, if, if you're willing to give the little that you got, God can give you everything you need. Amen. God can take little and make much out of it when you'll put Him right in the midst of it. And, and, and it says, accept the pot of oil or save the pot of oil. It says there in verse 3, Then He said, Go and borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. Get all the empty vessels you can get a hold of. Boy, that's a sermon in itself too, isn't it? Isn't there a lot of empty vessels in the world today? Amen. There's a lot of people. You know, we're talking about oil right now, and we can talk about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We can talk about a lot of people that need that oil, that oil and wine. You remember the song that we need poured into our vessels. How many people, even Christian peoples, we need that that oil poured in us. We need that vessel filled, glory to God. And again, I know that they're talking about financial and this oil physically here tonight, but but at the same time, go go these and borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons and, and shall pour out unto all those vessels and thou shalt set aside that which is full. Mm, man, don't we all need an indwelling power? Oh, don't we all need our vessels full? Glory to God. Yes, sir. You know, the Bible says, Ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. We need that oil and that wine poured upon us. We need it all running to our vessels tonight. Glory to God. And again, this lady said, All I got is a little. You know, if we did do that comparison in the anointing of the Holy Spirit, all I've got is a little bit of God. All I've got is a little bit of the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't got enough to hardly strike a match. But boy, if I could just get it to light up a little bit, maybe you could put a little fire behind it. Maybe you could move upon what little I got. But but again, we're we're talking about this lady here. It, it, it says, so she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto, their, unto her, There is not a vessel more, and the oil stayed and stopped flowing. Wow. Wouldn't it be nice if everyone in this world that needed their vessels full was to get full of God, to get full of God's Spirit, to get anointed by what God's wanting to do in their lives, to be powerful, not by their own strength, you know, but what does Zechariah say? Not by power nor by might, but by His Spirit. Wouldn't that be wonderful for the world to get a hold of that today? Wouldn't that be wonderful? You know, we talk about Russia, Ukraine. We talk about the things going on in the world. We talk about, you know, people are trying to say that you shouldn't even go to church, the dangers. And again, I know your brother, Lisa, was talking about that this morning. And, and people, you know, trying to come against people that are going to church and trying to make them afraid of that. And again, I'm not doubting that for one minute, but you know what? If it was so powerful that the Holy Spirit, people wouldn't have to worry about whether, Charlie, you talked about it too. I, it's not that I, I got to go to church. I want to go to church. And you can't tell me I can't do it because I'm going to want to be there, glory to God. And there's others talking about that. You know, if I lose my life, I lose it. If I'm no longer around, I'm going to do what God wants me to do. And God can use that for His kingdom, glory to God. I, I want more of God. I want more of the Holy Spirit. Fill my cup up, Lord. But again, when He said, you know, there's not a vessel more, the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, He said, go sell the oil and pay that debt. And live thou and thy children of the rest. In other words, you'll have enough for all that you need. It'll not run out. And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunan, where was a great woman. And I believe it's talking about financially great. And she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as often as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. There was something about that man that drew that rich woman. There's something about him. I, I want him to stop by. She has a husband. She's not flirting. She's just, there's something about that man that's drawing her. Bring him, bring him to our house. I, I'll feed him. I'll take care of him. Wow. 
And she said unto her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is an holy man of God, which passes by us continually. Can people perceive that in us? Not because we wear a suit and tie on Sunday, not because we uh, wear the religious articles on our whatever, our cars, or our bodies, you know, people wear the crosses and all the other things and the Christian t-shirts. I'm not opposed to that. Uh, again, if you'll be ashamed of him, he'll be ashamed of you. But, but at the same time, we're, we're thinking all that stuff. But, you know, whether we're wearing a suit and tie or got a, a Jesus t-shirt on or got a cross around our neck, can people perceive that there's something holy about you? You say, well, there's no holiness in me at all. Well, you might want to make it to the altar as quick as you can because the Bible says without holiness, no man or woman shall see God. And you say, well, I, I feel like mine's is filthy rags. I know that. We're not talking about our own holiness. We're not talking about our own self-righteousness. We're talking about God's holiness. We're talking about God's righteousness. Praise God. And again, that woman perceiving that this man is a man of God. He's a holy man. There's something special about him. Again, you know, we've talked about people's spirit bearing witness with ours. You know, you could be at a gas station I mentioned many times and, and somebody be talking to you across the pumps and, and you can just sense that there's something <coughs> special about the kingdom of God in them and you don't have to, to see some kind of sparklers or anything else. You just feel the presence of God knowing that you're talking to somebody that loves the Lord and then your conversation many times will go the way it needs to go pretty quickly. And it says, I perceive that this is a holy man of God which passeth by us continue. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall. And let us set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick. And it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in thither. We're going to take care of this guy. We're going to make sure that we have a place for him to stay. You know, yeah. he's tired and he's doing the work of God. Let's, let's make a place that we can help him. And it fell on a day that he came thither and he turned him to, to the chamber and lay there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him and he said, said unto him, Say now unto her, his servant he's talking about, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? Wouldst thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? Do you want us to talk to the government for you? I've got some pull. Uh, yeah. You know, do you want us to talk to the captain of the guard, the, you know, the ones that are military? I've got some pull. Would you like me to talk to them for you? And she answered, I, I dwell among my own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Verily, she hath no child. And her husband's old. And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, About this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thy handmaiden or thy handmaid. There's things sometimes that are hard to believe, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Have you ever had something that you wanted so badly, so much? that you didn't know if it could ever be truly manifested. This is just more, you know. Uh, I'm sure that they've been trying to have a child for years and there's just nothing's happening here. And, and it's like, you know, I, I don't know about this. It, it says, do not lie unto the hand, handmaiden. And the woman conceived and bare a son at that season that Elijah had said unto her according to the time of life. You know, uh, a woman of God, many times that's what they're desirous of, isn't it? To bring forth a child into this world, to raise it, and to have something to nourish and, and protect over and care for. And again, that's what mothers are about, isn't it? Caring for the ones that they love. And again, that, that's what this woman's wanting. She's wanting a, a, a baby to carry for, a, a child to grow up, and somebody that she can watch over and, and do what she needs to. And, and it says... And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father's father to the reapers. And he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said to a lad, Carry him to his mother. They believed, I think, he was having some kind of heat stroke, possibly. 
commentaries that is. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. Wow. This child that she had prayed for, this child that she had been promised, it, it, it died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. And she called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, Wherefore will I go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. It's not church night. Right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it isn't Wednesday night. It isn't Sunday night. I, I don't think he needs it. I don't think he's wanting to deal with us. You know, why would you want to go to you know where the man of God is? You know, he he's dealing that deal on Wednesday and Sunday or whatever the week night. Uh, and again, I'm being facetious about that, but it says you know in these religious times. But uh, new moon or Sabbath, and she said, "It shall be well." <laughs> Remember that old song. It is well with my soul, praise God. Amen. Oh my goodness. Aren't you glad that it's well with your soul? You know, she makes that statement a few times. You know, everything's going wrong. I mean, here her son has just died of a sunstroke or heat stroke, whatever it is. Uh, something's stuck in place. And it said, Then she sat on an ass, saddled an ass, and said to her servant, Drive and go forward, slack not thy riding for me except I bid thee. In other words, put the pedal to the metal. Drive that thing fast. That's some pretty rough riding back then, I'm sure. They didn't have the nice paved roads or even nice slick dirt roads, I'm sure. I mean, they're just riding these paths that the, you know, the horses and things had been straddled on for a long time. Again, this is going to beat the daylight set over, but it's a big deal. She's wanting to get to this man of God because her child is gone. And, and she remembers something about that child. You know, she told the man of God, don't, don't lie to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you, you told me I'm going to have a son and I, and I want that son. And, and it said, So she went and came under the man of God to Mount Carmel. And, and it came to pass when, when the man of God saw her afar off that he said to Gehazi, his servant, behold, yonder is a Shinnamonite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with thy child? And she answered, It is well. Wow. Hmm. The man that lost his family across the sea. Was it De Bergewa? How did you pronounce that name? Either way, remember he lost his whole family on that ship that went down years ago and uh, all of them drowned except for the mother I think it was and again when he went across the same place where that ship had went down he wrote that song it is well with my soul how can you say it's well with my soul yeah. when everything's wow. going to pieces I, I mean there's a problem in the house there's a problem in the family there's a problem in life itself and, and you want me to say it is well isn't that a lie? Oh, isn't that presumptuous? What is that? Isn't it well with our soul when we know who's holding our soul up? Amen. Isn't it well with God when we know who's got our heart in our hand? Isn't it well when we know that God's in control and we're not regardless of what's going on around us? It is well... And when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to thrust her away. And the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is vexed or troubled within her. And, and the Lord hath hid it from me and hath not told me. And she said, Did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, Do not deceive me? <laughs> wow. Then he said to Gehazi, Gird up thy loins and take my staff in thy hand. And and go thy way, if thou meet any man, salute him not, and if any salute thee, answer him not again. Remember the kiss on the cheeks and all that stuff. Don't mess with all that. I, I want you to go as fast as you can. Uh, answer him not again. And lay my staff upon the face of the child. <laughs> well, that's fine and dandy, but Gehazi is not Elisha. No, he's not. I mean, uh, she, I think she saw right through him. If we realize the story of Gehazi, he's had some things going on later on in life. 
you know, trying to get money and everything else later on with the, you know, the one that dipped in the name and when he dipped seven times and all that stuff. But that has not happened yet. But but here we realize that, you know, Gehazi, that's who he's going to send. And, and that sounds all right. You know, I'm going to send my, my staff member. I'm going to send somebody else, Elisha's saying. And, right, and, and the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. And Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing, wherefore he went in again to meet him and told him, saying, The child is not awaked. Man, I did exactly what you told me, but it didn't happen. Wonder why. But without faith, mm -hmm. it's impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Amen. First of all, I'm not for sure where Gehazi stood at with God. Second of all, that woman's faith was not in Gehazi. And third of all, God had been using Elisha to move upon situations, and that woman knew that. I want to go where the power of God's at. I want to go to the source. How about you? And I'm not saying it's in a man always, but, you know, if God's using somebody, I'm not opposed to that. You know, I've talked about, you know, if God moved a revival in this building tonight, if God moved a revival in this building here in the near future, I don't care who it comes by as long as it comes by God. I don't want to be so proud. You know, if it's not me preaching, if it's not me saying, if it's not me doing it, then, then it can't be of God. Whoever God chooses to use, let Him do it. Yes, amen. Whatever God wants to do, let Him do it. Don't get all hung up in our pride and our arrogance and think it, it's got to be this way and it's got to be that way. Let's let God be true and never man a liar. Let's yes. not let God do, you, you know, revival may come from a little child one of these days. You know, we talked about Jochebed and her little baby Moses this morning. You know, I don't know who God's going to use for revival, but I want God to use all of us. How about you tonight? Amen. Yeah. But at the same time, I want to know that the move of God is really coming from God. How about you? And that woman had enough discernment that she knew that I need to get the man of God to go with me. I don't want his servant. I, I want him to go. And, and going on here, it says, And Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child, but there was neither voice nor hearing, wherefore he went again to meet him and told him, saying, The child is not awake. And when Elisha was come unto the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon the bed. And he went in therefore and shut the door upon them too and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands. And he stretched himself on the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Wow. God's moving. God's using this man, and He's using the faith of that woman that trusted in this man of God. Then He returned and walked in the house to and fro, and went up and stretched Himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. And He called Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite. So He called her, and when she was come in to him, He said, Take up thy son. Then she went in and fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground and took up her son and went out. Wow. God used the man of God. God used the faith of the woman. That woman wasn't going to give in. She wasn't going to uh, throw in the towel. She was determined. I know the story don't always turn out that way, but this time it did. That woman was desirous. You know, she even made Elisha know, you know, you made me a promise. You know, you told me what was the desire of my heart. And, and you offered me to give me protection. You offered to give me, you know, some kind of prestige with the king and everything else. And you knew that wasn't what I want. I was with my own people. I don't need that kind of deal. But I told you what I want. I wanted a son. And now he's dead. What is the deal? Elisha, I need what you told me you were going to give me. And that is a son. Wow. Mm -mm. She went in and fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground and took up her son and went out. 
And Elijah came again to Gilgal, and there was a dearth in the land. And the sons of the prophet were sitting before him, and he said unto his servants, Sit on the great pot and the seething pot for the sons of the prophets. And, and one went into the, into the field to gather herbs and found a wild vine and gathered thereof wild gourds, his lap full, and came and shred them into a pot of pottage, for they knew them not. So they poured out for the man to eat, and it came to pass as they were eating of the pottage that they cried out and said, O oh, thou man of God, there is death in the pot. And they could not eat thereof. There's poison in it. I mean, Elijah, you just raised a man from dead, and now you're trying to kill us. We're out here getting ready to eat poison. Yeah. This ain't a good deal. But he said, Then bring meal. And he cast it into the pot, and he said, Pour out for the people that they may eat. And there was no harm in the pot. And there came a man from Balshelisha and brought the man of God bread of the first fruits, twenty loaves of barley, and full ears of corn and husk thereof. And he said, Give unto the people that they may eat. And his servitor said, What should I set this before a hundred men? And he said again, Give the people that they may eat. For thus saith the Lord, They shall eat and shall leave thereof. So he set it before them, and they did eat and left thereof according to the word of the Lord. The food didn't run out. Does that sound familiar? That's Old Testament. God did it before, God will do it again. Amen. I mean, He fed people with, you know, a couple of loaves and some fishes before, and He did that a couple of times. And, and again, don't we have that promise that my God shall supply all your all needs according to His riches and glory? You know, uh, again, we see God taking care of situations. Yes, He uses Elisha. And yes, He uses the faith of a woman. And yes, He uses other people. Do you believe that He can use you tonight? You know, we begin starting out tonight with that vessel that was empty. We talked about getting it full of the oil that God had given. How about us tonight? Do we believe that God can do great things in our life and fill our vessels full tonight? Let's stand tonight. We're going to close. We're not going to go into anything else tonight. But uh, again, it's been a good Mother's Day today. And I hope all the mothers have enjoyed the, the day. And, and I hope that you've enjoyed this evening. And uh, again, remember, God's got you. God can take care of you. If God can do it with a man of God, with Elisha, if God can do it with a man or woman of God that we're here tonight. Isn't there a scripture in the Bible that says that the prayers of the righteous availeth much? Can we believe for that? Yes. We're wanting to see revival. Let's believe for that. We're wanting to see salvation and healing. Let's believe for that. We're wanting to see, I know the mamas are, but the daddies are too. We're wanting to see our sons and our daughters and grandchildren and uncles and aunts come to the Lord. Let's believe for that. Praise God. Whether you're here in the building or whether there's people watching or listening another time, let's believe that God can do great things. Let's close in prayer tonight. If you have a need, you're welcome to come to the altar at any time. But if not, we're just going to close. If you need to, to pray with us or something afterwards, just come up here and we'll start to do that. If not, we're going to finish up here tonight. God, we just thank you for the time that we've had here tonight. We thank you, God, for, again, this whole Mother's Day. It's been a beautiful day in the Lord. It's been a, a good time. We thank you, God, for the blessings of mothers. We thank you for the, the blessings of families, Lord. And we just pray that, that families can be more like what the families of God that your Bible tells us about, Lord. That we can have virtuous women of, of God. And we can have men of God that will stand up for truth. And we can have children that will honor their mothers and their fathers. And, and great things can come forth. We pray up over each and every life here tonight and those that will watch and listen at another time. And again, just do a great thing in all of us. And again, Lord, bring us back together when the opportunity comes. But Lord, even though we may not be in the building together, Lord, let us always be with you. For we know that God, your word says you'll never leave nor forsake us. Again, keep us safe in our travels home tonight and wherever we go. And we ask all things in Jesus' name and all God's children said, Amen. 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 God bless you. Have a good night. Shake a hand with somebody if you like. Tell somebody you love them tonight. Again, come back and be with us Wednesday night. And have a good evening in the Lord. God bless. And don't forget the baby bottles. We'll get a hold of them too. Wednesday night.